This is Kendra, the Divine Purpose Mentor, and this is a personal reading. The question about the Twin Flame. I received the message that she came to teach you or show you or remind you about your wounding around trust and that it is important to look at the initial relationship with a woman, to look at the relationship with your mother. When was the first time that you felt that same distrust within the relationship of your mother? I also saw that this memory starts around the age of four and that the reason why you've been feeling the emotional up and down for one, the negative emotions were because you were resisting the emotions. You were resisting where you are and judging the negative emotions as not being acceptable. And I believe that this is probably related to the relationship with your mother. You not being, it not being acceptable to be in certain emotions and other emotions being validated but there was no there was no listening to the self it was about bypassing your own experience to validate the mother and this caused a level of unsafety in the relationship because you were constantly having to gauge where your mother was in order to know where you could be and this right now is all coming up and it might not be on a conscious level but emotionally you can feel it brewing and when you wake up I'm seeing this wrestle of and then I'm seeing a weeding away of people in your life thinking that if people aren't in your life, then your emotional reactions or responses will be minimized because you won't be having to search for where you exist within them in order to keep yourself safe. But all of this has done is caused a level of loneliness now is the time to go through the process of individuation. It's time to allow yourself to have the childhood that you couldn't have within a relationship dynamic that didn't allow for you to have a sense of self. There's nothing wrong with where you are. Nothing. But the Lord of Karma in Saturn is coming from retrograde into closing and going direct. And so, this week you've been feeling that it's like a purging and everything's bubbling to the surface and you're probably, that is why you're reflecting and thinking about a person from the past. That nostalgia comes from Saturn. It's bringing up all of the stuff and it's asking for you to look at all of the doors that you've left open and that doesn't mean that as these things come up it's like masks that we've put on in order to keep ourselves safe and keep ourselves loved and we are like puking these aspects out of us and as these walls and masks come up, if you put it back on and try to wear it as your face, it's not going to feel good. Because you've birthed to life a consciousness that knows that that isn't your truth. That is just a style of relating that we were taught in order to survive. I would look at Working with the aspect of you that is enmeshed 
in needing to be something for someone else. So think about all of the ways that as they come up, just be mindful of them. And that means like, why am I doing every single thing am I, I'm doing? When you wake up, are you waking up by an alarm? Are you doing something for financial gain in order to have a life that you desire in the future? Or are you waking up and enjoying the process? Every single moment of the day, enjoying the process. Because that's what it's about. But the thing is, is you can't find your purpose or find your happiness through the outside. You have to go back inside and allow yourself to have a childhood. And that doesn't mean that you have to act like a child or whatever. Whatever made it mean, just know that the vibration that I just got, that's not what I mean. And I say that because this is a multi-dimensional universe and I am tapped into all of the different dimensions and so I can feel the vibration of you when you are listening to this message. It means when you wake up, you check in with yourself. How do I feel right now? What would make me feel better? What do I want to do? What do I feel that I have to do that I don't want to do? Those things that you feel that you have to do but you don't want to do. Is there someone else that could do that for you? That maybe you could pay a little bit of money. Or maybe you could exchange energy in some other way so that you are focused on only going in the direction of what feels better. What feels good. So that you can find your preferences. Because then and only then will you find your purpose and live in alignment with your truth. And in that vibration, you will meet your other half. Your, I don't even like to say other half because you are a complete person with everything that you needed inside of yourself the day that you were born. The thing is, is over the process of socialization, we have been taught and conditioned to forget who we truly are. But it is only when we are filling up our own cup of self-love, and I don't mean physically going to the salon and getting a massage and going to the gym. I'm not just talking about taking care of our physical appearance. I'm talking about who are you? What do you desire? What brings you joy? What lights you up? What are you passionate about? What are your preferences? When you know yourself, when you're filling up your own cup of self-love from a core of you being, not an ego selfishness, but it's to know and love every aspect of you. It's turning in the direction of those aspects of you that come up that you want to hide or that you want to reject and you want to deny. Knowing that that is not your thought. That is something you have been taught that was not okay about you. So remember that internal antagonist that goes off is not your voice. So identify it. Go back to those memories where that aspect of your child still sits, waiting for you to look at it, waiting for you to come and listen. What does that inner child need? What did it need in that moment?
throughout the day. Set an alarm throughout the course of your day. And when that alarm goes off, take 10 deep breaths in the mouth and out the nose, ground into your body and feel any sensations or emotions that come up. Feel them all the way through. After you have felt them and allowed them to expand and expand and expand until you feel that popping or releasing sensation, ask it what it was there to do for you. What was it reminding you of? That feeling flavor. What is it calling your attention to? And when a memory comes up, tap into the part of the memory where something happened and it caused you pain. And remember what it gave rise to and that is the opposite of that pain. What was the resolution? And then create that resolution for yourself in your waking life. You are not going to find the answers that you desire and the love that you have always known existed but yet felt out of your grasp. But you're only going to know that love when you know who you are and what you love. And turn and expand that heart energy through every single cell of your body. It's listening to that still small voice within you. Allowing yourself to breathe every time that instinct comes up and it wants you to hurry up and get out of wherever it is that you are because it feels uncomfortable. Acknowledging that because we fracture ourselves in multiple pieces in order to keep ourselves in connection with our primary caregivers, that until we go back and rescue our inner child and put ourselves back together, until then, it's always going to feel uncomfortable and it's always going to feel disconnected. Because those parts of you, they're fractured off on the outside. And so I feel that this keeps calling my attention to ask you what it is that you want. What do you desire? Who are you? What is it that you love to do that you couldn't stop doing? Even if someone paid you to stop doing it, you couldn't stop doing it. If you say you don't know, then it's time to go and sample a lot of different things. To play with it. To find what lights you up. To find your preferences. When you find and embody in those preferences and you walk in the direction of your joy, then you ask the universe, God, source, what would you have me do? What would you have me say? Where would you have me go? And to whom would you have me serve? But first, you have to find your sense of self so that that service doesn't come from sacrifice. 
and so that that love doesn't come from codependency. It's when you're walking in the direction and you are embodied as your true authentic self that you come together with a counterpart that will offer you the most divine love and expansion that elevates you. Because up until this point, the only relationships that we've experienced have been karmic relationships that have been our teachers that may have been very healing and all of them definitely have multiple lessons that will expand and catalyze us but we've been learning through understanding all of the shadows And the only way to have a relationship that isn't in the shadows is to come out of the shadows ourselves, to meet all of our aspects, to integrate and fully embody, and to live in alignment, walking in our purpose, in our power, with love of the process every single day and not shaming ourselves when we get off center not judging our negative emotions when they come up but going towards them instead of resisting against them knowing that the only thing that causes us pain is our resistance to experiencing the emotions that we judge as not acceptable But all of our emotions are exactly right. It is our compass telling us where we are in alignment with our higher self or walking in the opposite direction of it. So when those negative emotions come up, ask yourself, what is this calling my attention to? It's not about something being wrong with you or about something that you need to fix. It is about What am I doing in this moment? Where is the joy in this moment? What am I telling myself that I have to do that I don't want to do? Where am I sacrificing myself? Where am I enmeshed with no boundaries because I was taught that I wasn't allowed to have boundaries or my own emotions? if they weren't validating others. And I promise you, when you get to that point of following the steps in this message, that you will meet that soulmate, that twin flame, that counterpart that will light you up that will bring you joy. But it won't be a joy that you will only experience within the relationship. In the pendulum of the good and bad times, it won't be so dramatic. It will be balanced. It will remind you of how much you love yourself. It won't be detrimental to your health to be in that relationship. Now is the time. If you follow these steps, if you ask yourself these questions, it's not going to be easy because a lot of stuff has happened and 
it's hard to unlearn something. It's just like muscle memory. When we program our mind, it's just like when we program our body, which our mind has programmed our body. And there's different emotions and hormones that flood our body with sensations. When we smell or see or experience something that is fractured within us that we were able to complete in our past. So know that before we can experience the totality of the greatest of all good, we first have to go back and unlearn all of the programming and the patterning and knowing that this didn't just come from your lifetime. That trauma gets stuck in our DNA. But I promise you, if you follow your compass of emotions and you go in the direction of all of them and allow them to make you aware of exactly where you are, and then you go and follow what the resolution is, what feels better, follow relief. Once you get to that joy and bliss, that is your purpose. Your purpose is to come here and embody in your truth, to vibrate in harmony with your soul ray harmonics and to emulate out that frequency. Because you don't have to say anything to the people around you. We are all connected. And as we rise, we elevate everything on this planet. And you chose to come to this planet to do just that. So get excited about the process. And know that it's a marathon, not a sprint. So make sure you're enjoying the process. And know that I'm here to guide you along the way. This is Kendra, the Divine Purpose Mentor. Have a good day.